All right, folks, how are we doing? It's Shabash. Welcome back to the channel. It's Orna again, and we're actually playing Heretic this time. Uh, I know I've not been doing too much Heretic videos at all uh, in recent months, but uh, Heretic's just been buffed. It's the back end of 2021. I think three days, uh, two days only to go until uh, 2022. So let's uh, go out here with a bang. Heretic's been uh, buffed pretty significantly. And what we're going to do, uh, this video is going to be kind of build guide showcase uh, for party play for kind of theme dungeon horror dungeons uh, carry mode and uh, I've been having a lot of fun with this build we're playing heretic bard and uh, of course charmer is is an option and uh, I do have a couple of preferences for bard over charmer of course we're going to be using the mages dance uh, AoE skill uh, to take down pretty much everything that the game has to, to throw at us and uh, there is the you know, the difference between Mage's Dance and uh, Mage's Pavane. Firstly, the Bard spec is only 50,000 Orns to switch to, whereas Charmer is, of course, 200,000 Orns. And for someone like myself who spec switches, you know, if I'm in the mood, I'll spec switch multiple times uh, during the day. You know, I do I do save, end up saving a few hundred thousand Orns going Bard over Charmer. And uh, yeah, it does add up in the end. But uh, also Mage's Dance it has uh, a much higher lower end, if that makes sense, than uh, Mage's Pavane. Uh, its lowest damaging, uh, kind of, its lower, lower damage values actually go five times lower than uh, Mage's Dance. So it's going to leave more trash mobs actually alive uh, on average, whereas Mage's Dance, it's, uh, it's very consistent. I know kind of what damage I'm going to get. And you know, the average is a bit lower than Mages Vivain, but uh, hopefully all going well with this build, we're still gonna be taking out everything. And uh, you know, it's cheaper mana and stuff. So, you know, Mages Pavane with Charmer is completely viable. You know, take this build, copy everything, just swap in Mages Pavane rather than Mages Dance and uh, the build will work, you know, pretty much exactly the same. So let's take a look at my gear quickly. And uh, there's a couple of pieces here for this particular build, uh, which, uh, yeah, is, uh, is is kind of focused on this build. There are other ways to play Bard with Mage's Dance. I'll maybe come on to those options at the end of the video. But for this particular build, we're going to be using the Ashen Phoenix Pet. Uh, by the way, we're going to try and get the Deific Channel proc as much as possible from uh, the buff of our pet. So it should be coming around in January, actually, if you didn't already get it during the, the Christmas holidays when it was on sale there. So in order to, to buff, uh, to get that Deific channel buff as much as possible, I'm using a Feral and a Risen Feral Archistaff, which without any adornments gives a, a plus 7% action rate to your pet. And I've actually stuck in uh, four Bestial Eyes in there, four Broken Bestial Eyes, to increase that additional action rate to 11%. So I think in total, our Ashen Phoenix will have roughly 14% action rate chance on uh, on the buff, so for the epic channel, so fairly high. And then I've just stuck in uh, some uh, ornate Avalon jewels for a little bit more wards and a little bit more magic. And then following from that, I've got two Lugas gauntlets from the Grand Knight Lugas event raid a couple months ago. I'm gonna try and get that triple magic up uh, proc. Now I'm not 100% sure if it's uh, if it's actually true, but uh, I think. Way back in beta, you know, these kind of uh, proccing items, I think if you hit multiple enemies, it would actually have an increased chance of proccing. So uh, maybe we can actually clarify that as we go through this uh, dungeons. And, you know, those two, you know, if you don't have Lucas Gauntlets, I would use probably my highest uh, additional magic accessories, or you could use Freya Charms. Uh, those are two good options, you know, Freya Charms, uh, if you, especially if you don't have the Feral Archie Staff, you'd probably go with Freya Charms. And the beauty of the Heretic buff giving us Steadfast kind of unlocks our accessory slots. We don't need to take Briny Pendant, we don't need to take uh, Ring of Anwin uh, anymore, so, you know, really super nice. Freeing up those slots, you know, for some more build ideas. And then basically, next kind of most important piece I would say is the, is the Heretic's Robe. 
which um, gives us a huge amount of magic. This one's giving us almost 900 magic, trying to Godforge it if we're lucky here. And I've just stuck Azure Pinions in there. And yeah, Heretic's Robe, it uh, increases the mana cost of our skills, helps get us into Iconoclast range that much quicker. Uh, just a really good piece of gear. There is no defense on it, it's very low resistance as well, so we are going to be you know, relying on a bit of ward. And that comes from our shield, obviously, the, you know, pretty much just gone for our highest uh, ward shield. Then we've got uh, Apollyon boots, the incarnate boots, again with Azure Pinions. That gives us this base magic on the poly boots, which is I quite like. Extra magic, 30% uh, ward. And then on my head, I've got uh, I've got a legendary Avalon crown. And this is uh, this is just a, kind of like a, a trashy piece of gear. It's uh, got some mana, uh, jewels of the deep in there. It's got some azure pinions in there. It's just kind of a mixed match. Uh, this is back from uh, Realm Shifter, Major Pavane days, but uh, you know it does the job. Uh, it gives immune to petrification, which is not too bad for uh, for Valley of the Gods. Um, so you know, uh, definitely. You could put a poly on hand here, you could uh, use Old Northern Crown, uh, you could use Lioness Crown, you could use multitude of things in here. This is just what I'm going for. Uh, I'll quickly show you the stats. And again, this uh, build will be going on the Ornal Legends website if you want to see these, uh, you know, the the equipment, the spell list. Uh, get you screenshots of that in the link below. So my Ascension level for Heretic is currently level 10 as well, by the way, so just bear that in mind. And of course, I'm level 250. So we're sitting at, you know, over 12k HP, 3800 mana. Mm, yeah, that's pretty good. We will have to be using mana potions throughout uh, the run. And uh, just the, with the Heretic's row, but uh, yeah, shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, 50k ward. Again, similar to the to the Realm Shifter video, we're going to be using Snotra in this build for extra offense. So you do want a decent amount of wards to be able to withstand those hits. I would say, you know, 35, 40k as a sort of minimum to feel comfortable. And, um, you know, you might have pieces of gear that make you, you know, for sure you could complete these dungeons with 30k ward or even a bit less if you're lucky. Um, just, or unlucky, you know, sometimes you're going to lose dungeons, uh, whatever, whatever you do. Uh, defense pretty much non-existent and then our magic there 4900 uh, 14 so you know just under 5k magic there um, you know resistance foresight that's pretty much all we need to do so you know 4900 magic that's going to be a benchmark for for, for this and um, let's go into our spell list show you the the main ones I'm taking of course mage's dance is going to be our uh, main damage dealing skill We've got our, um, our boosting skills, Golem's Fortitude. Then you've got, you know, Magic Boost, Mimic's Mischief. You can use Jin's Talent. Uh, you don't even need to use Magic Boost. You can use Magic Tonic if you want. Save, you know, get an extra skill slot there for if you want to bring out um, some of the elemental uh, ward skills. You know, that's a pretty good shout. Me, I've not had any trouble with this. Uh, Gate of Snotra as well for, again, the extra offense we want. And then I've got Sleep Dart there, which is just like, you know, it's, it's pretty useful if you're actually in party play, just in case you need to kind of debuff an enemy for a round or two. Uh, Ward of Mithril is actually the only ward skill I use. Basically, with Heretic's Life Siphon, we can we regain health quite a lot. So we don't necessarily need to get 100% ward absorption. Um, that's something, uh, you know, and then you pair that Ward of Mithril with uh, like Transference 2. Uh, to, which regains ward uh, really healthy rate. I use transference two over transference three because typically I have more than enough damage with transference two and it just costs less mana and they both uh, regen the same amount of ward. Then, um, yeah, standard. Uh, well, we've got drain, drain three. Yeah, when we do get low in health, uh, drain three, you know, knock something out. It's elementless damage, like Mage's Dance. And then we've got a cheap. Magic strikes just to finish off, uh, finish off a bunch of enemies, you know, stragglers. Then we've got a couple of nuking skills, uh, three nuking skills really. You've got the Quake Storm two, Multi Tremor three, which is, um, I guess, most us useful for uh, deplenishing our mana really quickly. Uh, then Ultima, for whatever reason, 
uh, maybe using you know knocking out some uh, some uh, some really high HP enemies like uh, Zerkers and Mammons, and also fortify three. Um, that's the quickest way to build war turns uh, in the beginning. So that is the skill loadout. Of course, I'd say really the only main um, you know the, kind of the mandatory skills. Yes, you got Major's Dance. Then you've got uh, the buff skills. Really, Golem's Fortitude, Mimic's Mischief, Origins Talent, Gate of Snotra. You can use Magic Tonic or Magic Boost. Then I use Ward of Mithril, Drain 3, Magic Strikes, mm, Transference 3, or sorry, Transference 2. You know, those are the really the only mandatory skills. Uh, you can kind of fill in the rest in with, the, with whatever you want. I would have a couple of nuking skills in there just in case. But that's what we're going with. And uh, let's just see how, how the first run goes. Uh, didn't get any broken smelly shoes. We're again using uh, Drow's spot here, Double Valley of the Gods. Absolute, uh, absolute awesome spot. And let's, I think uh, I think we're ready to go, yeah. Okay, we'll just uh, see how we go. Got plenty of, of, of gear I can Godforge in here. So yeah, first up, definitely want to use uh, Ward of Mithril. Uh, and there's uh, the defect channel proc straight away. So, the Arisen Shield, uh, pretty good against those uh, Sluas. And you know, with Slua being a high health, health enemy, I might just, uh, I'll try a quick Mage Dance, see if we can knock out uh, one or two enemies. We've got one, saves us a couple of turns. Okay, never mind. we'll just uh, continue buffing up at the start here. Just want to watch your, you know, watch your health, watch your mana, and watch your ward and ward turns uh, at the start. These dungeons. Mm, okay, get a Snotra. And okay, 10. Uh, yeah, that. Once you've used. Okay, what, what should we do? I'm just gonna. Yeah, get some more about with transference. Also, the Zerk enemy, take that out. Got a nice life siphon proc, so. Okay, what do we need? Uh, Da, 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 magic up, magic up. Okay, we're actually pretty much good to go here. So, I guess technically with enough action rate, we, you probably don't even need to to build that many war turns here uh, at all. Actually, this is you know I, I would not be surprised if this is more than enough. You know the our uh, our pet kind of working away there, finishing off those uh, last couple of enemies. So. I do believe we're, we're fully buffed here, so yeah, we're just going to use uh, Mage's Dance and uh, and charge through. Once we get, you know, when we're finishing off uh, Stragglers, uh, Zerks and the like, you can uh, recover Ward those turns or recover Health through Drain, so you know, use Transference, use uh, Drain where you need. Didn't get uh, a Lugus proc as yet. And then use the cheap magic strikes to, to finish off some of these high health enemies. And uh, yeah, with Mage's Dance being elementless uh, skill, it's just uh, you can just use it on it on absolutely everything. And uh, okay, if we had uh, kept that, uh, if we'd kept those uh, proc rates for a couple more turns, that would have been nice. But David Channel's back up. And um, yeah, pretty much, uh, pretty much easy street. I'm gonna. Okay, I can't actually use uh, major stance there, so I tend to use super elixirs. Get up to to one k mana. Not ideal, but oh, we got uh, some uh, stormy arisen shoes, I think. So there's almost. It's not much really to be afraid of. Um, trash mobs you're going to smash through. And uh, I guess the worst things are going to be any kind of Zerk hard hitting uh, attack enemies. So, you know, some of the Arisen Gods are going to hurt. Trying to take this opportunity to, to use Mana Potion. Yeah, I mean, this, this thing hurt a little bit. We need to just try and get our ward up uh, now and then with 
uh, transference too, but look at this, we've got uh, the Lugus Gauntlet, Triple Magic up, Davic Channel up, everything's up, let's uh, pop a Mage's Dance, yeah, two out of three down, we missed, uh, we missed the third Thor, <laughs> and uh, running through here, okay, we can, uh, we can recover some ward now, our ward turns dropping uh, a little bit, but you know, with a mixture of uh, life siphon transference, uh, we're never really in too much danger. Just gotta, you just gotta keep an eye out. So if you do not have um, the Ashen Phoenix or Feral Archistaff, you know this build. What you would do, uh, you know, you could swap in definitely the Chimera or or Fake Chimera pet for uh, the Berserk buff, it's extra fifty percent damage. That's actually what I've used before. This is uh, the first time I'm using the the Ashen Phoenix build, to be honest with you, and that works absolutely fine. You can just go with your highest magic staff, and uh, you don't need to worry about um, action rate on your pet or anything like that. I'm actually gonna stick in another Fortify Three here. Slightly worried about these uh, these ward turns, but. So here we go. Kind of looks like Deific Channel will be up for around half the dungeon. And, uh, excuse me. Yeah, the Lugus uh, Gauntlet proc's been up quite, quite a few times as well, I have to say. No God Forgers, of course. So we should be able to smash through these trash fours. Oh, all the procs are up. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> okay, Zerk uh, Anku could hurt. But look at these, all this Lugus procs up. Boom! If you get like a five, uh, six figure hits, oof. That was uh, pretty brutal. Oh, all the Demeters. Lovely. When you one-shot one of these uh, boss floors, that's uh, the best feeling. Okay, and that's going to be that. That's why we've got the cheap magic strikes. Finish that off. I believe that was uh, quite a quick run. Let's, uh, let's do the other one. Horde modes. Okay, 18, 17. I've got on the clock. buffing up at the start and uh, turns out those uh, war turns was just completely fine 20 odd war turns for this build seems to be absolutely fine so we get our magic up double magic up now I mean Mimic's Mischief, Jin's Talent doesn't really matter if the Mimic's Mischief procs those uh, defensive and resistance downs definitely use Ambrosia or um, uh, panacea just to you know there are still lots of things that can hit pretty hard from uh, magic wise and uh, just got to be careful oh the mist doesn't help I'm gonna take out take out the enemy with a pet okay just recover recover some ward And there is a Zerk team out there, so we can take the rest out, leave him, get Snotra up, and uh, we're good to go. Let's get some. Just, <laughs> let's get a few more war turns. Okay, twenty war turns uh, from floor two. That should be should be good. And uh, you know, I would say more than fifty percent of the time, what it feels like is you you have either Dafic Channel up or you have the triple magic up which um both of which double your your magic stat so uh really provides uh, really nice boosts and you know when they're both up 
you can clear pretty much every floor in here uh, with one hit, with one hit almost. Uh, pretty much, mammons and uh, Zerka Risen mammons are your only, the only thing that's gonna not get one shot or not have the potential to be one shot. Okay, need more turns, please, from the bird. I guess uh, once you clear one shot things, it doesn't doesn't give the bird the opportunity to uh, to attack, only to use the epic channel. Yeah, this is a this is a super juicy build. To be honest, this is probably the my favorite build that's uh, been playing since uh, the buff to Heretic. Okay, we've got an Ember Strike, but uh, I still don't know. I still don't know how much I trust these. Uh, if we can get these twelve war turns to last at the end of the dungeon. Again, no Godforge. I almost forget sometimes I'm doing a Valley of the Gods to actually try and Godforge things. So uh, yeah, Mage's Dance, just really consistent damage uh, compared to Mage's Pavane. Look at this, uh, I mean, most gods getting taken out. Okay, cheeky magic strikes, I mean 250,000 damage on magic strikes. Uh, oh, what more do you what more do you need? Mm, Zerk Tiamat. Surviving. Oh. Yeah, I mean the top end is still is still pretty insane on the major stance, you know, 150k with uh, the the Deific channel and the the triple magic up. And that wasn't even in max iconic class range. Uh, you know what? There's no Zergs here. I'm going to use an elixir. Still a 40k ward. If you you may need to bring uh, the Divine Bastion. Uh, well, I don't know. I think with uh, having Transference as a really good uh, ward recovery skill, I don't think uh, Divine Bastion is, is super necessary. You know, the Life Siphon, uh, the Life Siphon passive is, is just super nice. Keeps our health topped up. I didn't even need to use uh, Drain once, and we ran through there in about four and a half minutes. Valley of the Gods in four and a half minutes. So, yeah, Heretic Bard, absolutely, absolutely gorgeous stuff. Uh, ooh, nice decoration around here. Um, should we do a Goblin Fortress for the sake of it? <laughs> a couple of Goblin Forts here as well, which I which I didn't see. Uh, but same old story, you know. I mean, uh, probably we don't even need to to buff. Seriously, let's try a hard mode. Um, okay, we put one ward of Mithril at the start. Uh, we get our magic boost. And of course, this uh, you can definitely run the similar build on uh, Deity as well. You know, pretty much similar gear. And uh, of course, you have, op you know, uh, definitely Heretic's robe, head and uh, legs. You can wear whatever you want. You are not uh, restricted to magic gear. Let me get some, uh, some ward bag just in case. And uh, Deity even has uh, additional chance to get the Deific Channel proc, right? With uh, with this latest buff as well, so... Interesting stuff there. Just realized uh, I'm not going to have any way to recover mana. Uh, that was not clever to do hard mode. So we're probably going to have to flee this uh, very shortly. Or in fact, what you could do is uh, instead of a shield, you wear a scroll, like a Morgan scroll or a Fae scroll or something like that. Maka scroll. You can use a read scroll skill. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna have uh, enough mana here, but you know, you get the idea. I'm not sure there's much in. Uh, in this dungeon for us anyway. 
Okay, let's uh, actually swap out. Let's get, let's fire a... I'm just gonna fire a Morgan scroll here, see how much uh, mana we can get back. Level 10 Morgan scroll. 400 mana. Yeah, it's not bad, you know. That's the job. Okay. I mean, the life life in proc is just uh, oh, super nice. And uh, even when you're, for example, if you, if you even if you have a Chimera pet with the Berserk, um, with the Berserk buff, you know, chipping away at your HP. Um, current iteration of the game, uh, it's only going to take once, no matter how many enemies you hit. So even you hit four enemies, um, the Berserk, uh, like the damage over time proc only only takes down one time. Um, so you don't really have to worry about it too much. Whereas the Life Siphon proc actually kind of procs for each enemy that you hit. So <laughs> not the way it was working uh, in some of my earlier AoE showcases, but uh, that's how it's working right now. And um, yeah, I got there in the end with the swap in the Morgan scroll, and <laughs> that must have been like 500, 600k damage on that on that last floor. So there you go. That's Heretic Bard. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. There's uh, definitely kind of many different options you can you can use uh, on this build. Many different pieces of gear. And um, let's have a look if we can I don't know find uh, find stuff that we can use. I did mention that at the beginning. So I mean, you know, weapon wise, if you if you do if you do not have a feral archi staff um, with that base action rate, what you can consider is the Kaladanda, Arisen Kaladanda from Arisen Mammon has a lot of adornment slots. You know, I would stick seven or eight bestialize in there and you get pretty much the same thing. Uh, you just kind of lose out on a bit of ward mainly because Kaldanda's got very high magic compared to the Feral Archistaff. So, you know, very good options there. Of course, Morgan uh, weapons, always nice. Your, your magic is going to be super high. And um, if you, you know, maybe Morgan weapons paired with um, Chimera Pet, you can kind of swap out. Um, you know, if you don't have Lucas Gauntlet, you can just stick in. Uh, you know, Carl's rings or, or even Arisen rings. Um, don't be scared to drop your defense. If you, if you, you know, if you have high amounts of ward, you can play uh, a bit defensively. For uh, shield-wise, you know, you can you put in a Fayetico, put in a Risen Sartikuras, even Polygear, and um, the only difference that's going to make really, you're not going to be doing as much damage, and it will take you a bit longer to get into Iconoclast range. Um, but when you get into Iconoclast range, you won't need to mana pot, you won't need to mana pot. And um, Arisen Ember Road, is that an option? Uh, potentially. You... <laughs> that might be an option if you want even more uh, procs, temp ups. Uh, not a bad idea, actually, I should probably do that. But, you know, the Heretic's Road, uh, I mean, I've only got superior as your opinions in here. You can bump this over way over 900 magic if you get a good one. Um, Nah, for me, for me, this is something that makes the build because it's yeah, 900 magic is a lot. Um, head slot you can use Avalon Crown, uh, Poly Hood, Old Nothing Crown, anything with Ward in it. You know, Fayetti Horns. Uh, what else? Yeah, no, you have options. You have a lot of options. Shield-wise, I would say take a take a high ward shield, and um, you know if you're not doing Valley of the Gods, you can you, you know if you, if you want to farm Golden Fortresses, whatever you can uh, stick in the Morgan Scroll. Actually, what I've been doing, if I'm doing uh, lower tier party boss dungeons, I'm I'm actually using the the Morgan Scroll. Um, more often than not, because it does have a little bit of magic on it, yeah, 250 magic on it uh, at level 10, so that would, you know, go up and, and push 300 magic on that. 
in the leg slot. Why does uh, this have uh, magic? 12 magic, okay. Uh, is this sorted by magic? Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Leg slot, I would definitely say incarnate boots are good. You know, Balder gear is quite good. It has, uh, has a bit of ward. Of course, Ash and Phoenix gear as well. <laughs> for almost any heads, for any armor slot, it has ward. Arisen Searcher boots has ward. Uh, no, it doesn't. Okay, mine has ward because I put uh, jewels at the end, but um, <laughs> forgive me that. Unfortunately, Banshee gear doesn't have ward, so not not much of an option. But uh, yeah, Boulder boots, uh, great, great option, actually. Um, status protection, yeah. To stick that on top of the Steadfast, but uh, you know, you actually get decent amounts of HP, a uh, decent amount of ward, and um, that's going to be nice uh, for sure. A few adornment slots. Maybe stick some, some more as your opinions in there just to bump up that magic. You know, if you're if you're if you're going through a stage where you're just kind of farming, uh, theme dungeons, party dungeons, then um, for me personally, I I prefer just whacking in the whacking up the the offensive stats as much as possible. Uh, you know, enemies are not going to kill you if they're dead. You know, uh, this is how I am uh, how I am seeing this. So accessory wise, yeah, if you do not have, uh, if you missed out, Lucas Gauntlets. I would use Carl's rings. Um, again, Carl's rings are obviously another event locked item. If you do not have Carl's rings, I would honestly probably consider uh, just like using Arisen rings personally because I like offense. You know, you are losing a lot of uh, defense, but remember, if you're using Snotra anyway, the defense doesn't really matter. Resistance as well. If you if you can if you can get your ward above 45, 40 to 50k. I think go ahead, use the Risen Rings, whack up that uh, magic stat. Uh, Azure Crystals, 100 magic, not too bad, honestly. Uh, Arisen Arch Gizmo, again, kind of event gear. I didn't know that had magic on it, that's uh, quite interesting. Uh, what else do we have? Merlin's Ring, what is this? 100 magic, yeah, more uh, event gear. Wow, 100 magic at tier four, that's... Uh, Nice item. Yeah, crim then you then you're going down to crimson crimson eyes and stuff. So so okay. Uh, or what you can do again is the the Freya charm option. If you want to to use uh, Ashen Phoenix, uh, the buffing pet, yeah. Freya charms get the four percent action rate. You get, you know even use two of them. That's plus eight. Um, really nice. Uh, for Ash and Phoenix. Pet wise, um, I don't know what else, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure what else you would use other than um, Chimera and, uh, and Ash and Phoenix. Just, uh, okay, you could use this uh, Merlin's Pet Archimedes, but I don't know how often this is gonna come back. You know, just the double, literally doubling of your, of your stats from the Epic Channel is just huge. And then missing out on that, the, the plus 50% from the Berserk 1 buff, from the Chimera buffs, uh, this is just super consistent damage. I, I don't really see anything that outweighs these, you know. Uh, if you go defensive, you can use always use um, a ward regen pet like uh, or a Calcum Golem or the, the Fayetti pet, you know, this kind of things. Um, a little bit of ward regen helps uh, helps you there. So that's been, uh, yeah, we're having lots of fun with this build. Hopefully you, can, you guys can try something out. Um, let me know if you prefer a bard or, or, uh, or charmer, um, you know, one or the other, they're both kind of uh, two sides of, uh, of the same coin. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. I do want to thank all of my uh, supporters from uh, Twitch and, and Patreon, kind of keeping this or in a content train going into 2022. It's been uh, roughly one year since, uh, since it started actually, um, back when uh, didn't have uh, most of my full, most of my full time taken up by uh, by full time work, uh, funnily enough. But uh, yeah, the content has slowed down. I am aware of that, but uh, slowly we are somehow keeping it going uh, when I can, when I have the motivation. So yeah, seeing uh, again, just got to thank. I guess uh, I don't know if this will be my last video of of, of the year, but uh, if it is, I, again, got to thank everyone for watching. We got over so far over half a million views on uh, on the Orna stuff, which is just um, yeah, pretty crazy. Uh, definitely was not expecting this uh, this time this time last year, but um, big things coming. I think uh, really positive outlook on the game. Still having fun with it, uh, even spending 
a full day, literally a full day raiding uh, finesse uh, on the, the second last day of the, of the 10 day of raids uh, event. I spent a full day raiding, you know, I spent I think 250 summoning scrolls which on its own took about two hours uh, to summon all of those and uh, just kind of trimmed down. I got 51 finesses in the end uh, just going for something random. <laughs> Uh, managed to get one good uh, ornate uh, weapon, which I uh, don't really know why I'm talking about on a heretic video, but uh, that will be coming in a, in a future video, I'm sure. So, all that to say, uh, yeah, thanks to everyone for for watching and uh, you know liking stuff, sharing, helping people out. I think um, hopefully there's more more to come uh, in the future, not just from myself. So, yeah, well, uh, again, thank you for for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Ciao.